Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very special video for you. It's gonna be how to buy Yeezy Supply um, and hopefully it can help you guys increase the amount of pairs that you are getting or just maybe help tweak your setup a little bit. Sage is gonna be doing this video. Um, he is one of the BC Archives team members, so I'm gonna let him take over. He also does some of the filming for this channel. So he is gonna introduce himself and then he is gonna take over this video. I hope this helps you guys out a little bit. Uh, make sure to go leave a comment if you guys have any questions at all. I'm gonna throw our sponsors up on screen. Make sure to go check them out. Links are in the description. And I hope this video helps you guys. Enjoy. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Sage. I'm part of the BC Archives team and today we're going to be going over um, sort of a tutorial on Yeezy Supply. I'm going to run through how to set up for Yeezy Supply uh, and also some tips and tricks for trying to secure more pairs during drops. Uh, so we're going to be using Wrath in, in this example here but hopefully some of the stuff in this video you can take to other bots as well especially in regards to like gmails and captchas when we go over that type of stuff but to get started just as an example we'll make a new group here and I'm gonna kinda go through task creation here real quick we're just gonna use the bright blue skew as our skew and we're also gonna do the site as Yeezy Supply uh, and then here we'll just pick our profiles We'll just use every profile here and then size we'll just go for random and then number of tasks we'll keep as one quantity always keep as one in any bot that's pretty much how many of the SKU it's going to try to add to your cart and check out and every site now you can only do one the only site that actually will work with this is um, Supreme, and that's sort of why they added it. There's, there are some items on Supreme that you can actually add multiples of, and uh, but that doesn't really apply to any site besides Supreme. Proxies for just testing purposes, we'll just do no proxies here. And then in Advanced, uh, in Wrath, you always want to check Advanced Captcha. And that kind of goes into the Gmails, which we'll touch on here in a little bit. Uh, other bots do this as well, where they have an advanced CAPTCHA setting. Definitely refer to that bot's guides, but most of the time, this is going to always want to be turned on for any Yeezy Supply drop. And this basically allows your CAPTCHA harvester to solve, or you can have one Gmail in one CAPTCHA harvester, and that will pretty much solve for however many tasks you have created. Um, and then we just use the regular mode here. So now that we have all of our tasks created and stuff, we're pretty much ready there. Task creation is super easy for Yeezy Supply. It's basically just putting in the SKU, setting up your profiles, setting up your proxies, setting up your sizes. That's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to it. Delays, um, they're usually hard-coded in every bot, but they don't matter as much on Yeezy Supply. For Wrath, the basic or the standard is just 3,000 and 3,000. Um, which is totally fine there. Not super important when it comes to delays on Yeezy Supply. Moving on to by far the most important part of Yeezy Supply is going to be your captures. At any given release, I personally usually have three to four open at a time. And I run anywhere from 600 to about 1,000 tasks. Just because you can run a lot of tasks on Yeezy Supply definitely doesn't mean you should. And you can kind of like tweak your setup as you get used to like botting Yeezy Supply a little bit more and see how many you have open. I know some bots definitely recommend you have more than less. Uh, for example, Dash, I know you want to run, um, just as an example, one Capture Harvester for every 100 tasks you run. So when you're setting your Capture Harvester up, Basically, what will happen during the drop, you will see down in this corner a little recaptcha symbol, and that means that all your tasks are asking basically this harvester to solve a captcha for it, and then it sends it back, and then um, hopefully, eventually, you pass splash. If you do not see that recaptcha symbol down at the bottom, and you're waiting in splash, and people have checked out, your Gmail is definitely not good, um, and the IP 
that whatever proxy you put in your capture harvester is banned. I always recommend putting a capture proxy in your harvester because this will keep your Gmails at a 0.9 for a lot longer, which is what you need for Easy Supply. A good way to test, there's a tons of different websites that test and see what kind of score your Gmail has, but you're really aiming for a 0.9 Gmail, and this will allow your tasks to pass splash a lot faster. So yeah, at any given release, like I said, I usually have three to four. One other huge tip is uh, I know a lot of cook groups have, and sometimes bot discords do as well, but they have a like a checkout log where you can see other people in the bot. If other people in the bot are starting to check out like lots of pairs or you see that you know maybe in your cook group that a, a lot of other bots are checking out as well and you still haven't even passed splash, that's definitely a problem with your Gmail. So I usually have a backup with you know uh, around 10 Gmails honestly loaded into the bot at once. That way, if you know my IP gets banned or my capture proxy gets banned, um, I can always just exit out and swap it out with a new one. One other trick that I've learned as well is before you put in your or before you log into YouTube with your capture harvester, uh, you want to put your proxy in first, and this kind of just basically tricks it into thinking that it's logging in from the same IP because when you log in to a different IP address with a Gmail that's automatically gonna hurt your score just a little bit even if you know you might not see it if you test it in AYCD or you test it again on a different website um, but I know it does hurt your score and I've definitely had more success if I put the proxy in and then I log into YouTube one final couple talking points here really the main tips I have for you guys is definitely check make sure that recapture symbols there don't worry if it doesn't show up right away because sometimes it can take a second but if that ever disappears during a drop that IP is banned and that capture proxy is banned so get rid of that it's not helping you at all uh, with helping your tasks pass splash definitely check out the checkout feeds whether in your cook group or hopefully in your bot um, that way you know if you're not passing and a lot of people are checking out swap that harvester out get a fresh one in there and hopefully you can pass splash a little more so overall if you're not passing splash it's your gmails um, another thing too is it's not all about passing splash your proxies are definitely a huge play on easy supply as well so if you do end up passing splash um, another big issue a lot of people run into is carding errors most of the time that's honestly just due to the proxies that you're using are just either too slow or there's an issue with them one way or another not every task that pass splash don't expect to check out from a lot of the times proxy errors happen I recommend um, honestly running a mix of ISPs and residentials I've seen success with both it's kinda just you know sometimes it's just the drop itself easy supply will ban a ton of residentials and only ISPs will work or only you know they'll ban all the ISPs and resis are actually better so definitely recommend running a mix between them both I honestly have more success personally with residentials the final error you might see is error submitting info or error bad profile details that's what it says in RAS so that's kinda obvious what the problem is there uh, you definitely want to double check your profile make sure everything is in order maybe switch up um, apartment numbers if you're doing it that way another thing too is a lot of people use privacy on easy supply privacy cards those do work very well one big tip I have if you guys are using privacy cards but you are constantly getting declines on all your privacy stuff is to unlink your bank account from privacy and then relink it and I've done that once so before previously I was using privacy cards and I had I could never check out with any of my privacy cards I always got declined but once I unlinked my bank account and relinked it to privacy I've checked out multiple pairs since then well I hope you guys enjoyed this video definitely leave a like and leave a comment if you have any questions whatsoever and subscribe